Caddis Maximus here, this time with a little review of the Rigid R7001. So I previously did a video uh, quite a while ago about the R7000. I still have it. I haven't been able to dig it up. So this is the newer generation. And I should say this is not what is currently sold at Home Depot. I think this is probably from the 2010s, maybe through 2015. They just upgraded to a newer version, which looks very similar. You know it's a newer rigid drill just because of the overmolding on the front part of the drill here. But the newest version has like a little stippling on the overmolding. And this has a 7.5 amp motor, and they've recently increased it to 8 amps. This is a kind of an interesting drill. It had like a snap-on belt clip. This does not have that. But what I thought was an innovative approach is having this magnetic bit holder. And to tell you the truth, uh, one odd thing is there's like a hole here. And I don't know if that's the both hold, either hold six inch bits uh, flush and you just get a little bit of extra space. It's probably hold for both holding the six inch bits as well as providing like a little tongue for that snap in uh, belt clip. But that's the convenient thing about this drill, and I'll have to give them some credit for that because you can throw that on there, you can throw some fasteners on here, and as you're using the drill, you just have your bits and various fasteners you're working with stuck magnet magnetized to the top of the drill, and I think that's pretty innovative. However, I will give them heavy criticism. They have space here. They should have put in a bubble level uh, like the DeWalt drills have. That would have been a real nice, so that's a real big short or uh, bit of short-sightedness for a modern drill, <laughs> especially considering the foresight of having uh, this magnetic bit storage, which I think is pretty cool. 2700 RPM, so they're trying to spin these just a little bit faster. They Really what the industry standard is, like the DeWalt and Milwaukee's and stuff. Actually, for a while, Milwaukee's doing 2800 RPM. Once again, 2700, 2500 is, would be considered industry standard. This thing, if we listen, a little bit of rattling, if we squeeze the case, that's the field. Well, all these plastic clamshell uh, drills have issues where the plastic gets just a little bit worn. I mean, this drill is like new too. And then the field can rattle some. If I squeeze the case, sounds great, release the case. A little bit of rattling so that's a bit of a disappointment other than that um it was unfortunate i couldn't dig up my earlier version because i wanted to see if i could get if the gears would match up one thing i'm a little disappointed about is it's all ball needle bearing but or i should say all ball bearing but there's definitely some looseness here that could possibly be because it was dropped we don't have the kind of looseness this way but we do have it this way, which is just a little bit disappointing. Say so it could potentially have been dropped and dinged up the plastic, but nonetheless, you know, it should be uh, just a bit tighter than that, especially for a drill that looks like it's hardly been used. Pretty fast spinning motor. Lock on switch, matchstick reverse. Kind of this little indented double finger trigger, which is nice. But uh, sometimes you get away with putting extra torque on these screws and get those spindles just tightened up. The ubiquitous yellow DeWalt's also can have this type of issue with it. And the newer Porter cables and stuff, it's just this rigid just it seems to have quite a bit of play. Let me knock out the 10 screws that are holding this together and we'll take a look inside. Another thing I'm finding annoying is these actually are not T20 screws, they're T15s, but they have quite a bit of play in them. They're like, seems like they've been many oversized, slightly oversized, so they're like T17s if such a size existed. Still get, end up recommending the, the, the walls just because they're just such a namesake. And just about the same price. I think uh, Home Depot wants something like $60 or something. So this isn't a bad, it's not a bad price and not a bad drill for the price. But I think uh, it could be a little bit better. 
obligatory uh, uh, tracking tag inside the tool. They are advertising uh, glass fiber, thirty percent fiberglass nylon PA six GF thirty. This little magnet thing is actually all rubbery, and then they just have these magnets that are just slid into there. And interestingly enough, they it's kind of all held in place by these fingers, so it shouldn't fall out at all. At least that's some good news. High density motor, we can see, or there are lower speed and higher speed motors. Higher speed motors have these thinner bars, which means you know more contacts, more windings, and the motor ends up spinning faster. Wider contact motors end up spinning slower. We can see it's all ball bearing. Ball bearings on the front of the motor and on both sides of the spindle. It's just that there's just too much clearance on this little back pocket here, allowing this to rock back and forth. Which of caught in a drill like this is, I guess, not the biggest deal, but it can cause some early wear on the gears just because it's rocking one side to the other, and depending, you know, especially if you're using it for wire wheels and sanding and buffing, polishing that type of stuff, um, the gears end up concentrating their force on one edge, causing accelerated wear. As we can see, and I have mentioned many tools, including this rigid, what we have here is, of course, uh, just a little tiny 4-2 spindle, but it gives high cross-sectional area, very thick teeth. There's just more steel engaging and pretty thick teeth on the driven spur gear. Um, it just turns out coarser teeth are a little bit noisier. These are helical cut, so that does mitigate some of the noise, but... Coarser teeth are thicker, and they end up lasting longer. And many tool manufacturers, especially in the last 10, 15, 20 years, have just start going with thicker and thicker teeth. Of course, that cuts into the, those thick teeth, cut deep into the spindle. Under certain situations, especially if like the drill locks up, that can actually cause the spindle to deflect. It's just getting so thin. So they put in this little sleeve bearing up in front to help support the end of the spindle to keep it from deflecting. Other than that, it's, you know, all these types of drills now are just, you know, there's only slight variations in how they're built, but there's just only so many ways you can build a 3 8 inch general purpose drill. Variable speed trigger, motor, some ball bearings, helical cut gears in the front. Not a lot else to say. Except for that rattle is because this field just isn't held very tight and it can kind of rock back and forth this way rock around this way they could have done a better job staking that because all that's pressing down on it is just these really thin fingers and some manufacturers they put several fingers of these fingers are really wide but when they're this thin you know it doesn't take much for these this plastic to get it kind of just a little bit worn a little bit smushed and flattened and then you have that field that rattles around and makes some funky noises Finishing up, screws aren't the best, they're not the worst, but they just are basic screws and the threads are for plastic, but they're not particularly th thick. They're not like Milwaukee's Plastite, which has extra tall threads. And on some tools, the threads actually alternate short and then really tall and short and really tall. So the screws are more basic than some other manufacturers. So, you know, engineered product it's a i would say it's worth sixty dollars but not any more than sixty dollars so not a lot else to say i should mention on some of the like the dewalt to go back to those because they're just so common part of what they do to help mitigate issues like spindle getting loose it's a little touch less but the only way to really fix that now is to put some pieces of you know cut apart a you know, a feeler gauge that's like one or two thousandths and put two shims on each side of the bearing to tighten that up. But what many manufacturers do and the that noisy field is they actually, those little supports, they specify them to be actually a little bit extra tall. The areas that support the bearings are just a little bit when you, you know, nominal size, when you close the clamshell, they're just made a bit extra tight. So when you 
screw down the clamshell, there's actually some tension since it's, you know, a proper manufacturing would slightly undersize all those hold points so that the clamshell kind of acts as a spring. So when there's a little bit of wear, it still ends up holding them tight rather than having them be quote unquote, the perfect size. Initially that causes issues because there's no tolerance for the wear. As soon as you get wear, you get loose parts like loose spindles and noisy fields where if they had slightly made extra tight tolerances or compensated for that, then they could have used the advantage of a plastic case being just slightly too tight and then having constant spring tension. And so, you know, Rigid does offer their, you know, register in 90 days, get a lifetime warranty. So I guess that there's that. And that's one of the reasons these drills are so cheap. I mean, overall, I mean, it's a, you know, it's a, I mean, professional grade drill it has a high speed motor and ball bearing construction, helical cut gears. And I do like this kind of bit mechanism here, but they should have added a bubble level and they could have done a little bit better job engineering it, particularly because Rigid's made by the same company that owns Milwaukee. So it's not like they have a lot of excuses. Anyway, thanks for watching.